What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing some experiments with total load epoxy. Chances of success are very low, but we're just going to be having some fun, seeing what this stuff can do, and maybe we'll end up with a cool piece. So stick around and I'll show you what we're up to. All right, so this is my big box of cherry burl scraps. So a couple months ago, we went to a guy's property, cut a very big cherry burl off of a dead cherry tree. I milled it up into bulb lengths and slabs, but I was left with all these little random scrappy pieces and I didn't want to throw them away. So I threw them into my solar kiln, which we built in a previous video and I dried them all. So these are all kiln dried pieces of cherry burl. So what we're going to do is fill up a big bowl or a cup or something with these and pour epoxy all around them. You can see we've got some pretty big chunks of cherry burl here. These things have some crazy cool grain in them. We might have to cut some of them down to get them to fit in there really nicely, but we'll see how it goes. All right, so I did a little bit of digging around, and I just so happened to notice that I had a whole pile of these Total Boat Cups. So you guys know I love Total Boat Epoxy. I use all their products, and so I also have a bunch of these 24-ounce um, mixing cups. Now what I'm thinking that we do is cut up a whole bunch of this burl to fit into this cup, fill it up to the top, and then pour epoxy all around it. Then once it's dry, we'll take this cup off and stick the whole thing on the lathe. All right, so I guess we just uh, go for it here. Mm, already running into problems. This one's too big. Mm. I'm not exactly sure what this is going to look like, but I would imagine <clears throat> it's going to be pretty cool. Okay, so I got my total boat cup completely full of cherry burl, and I really made sure to wiggle it around good, get everything nestled in there really nicely. Um, so now what we're going to go ahead and do is make our best guess at how much epoxy this is going to take. I honestly have no clue at all. I would assume it's going to be probably a little bit less than 40% of uh, the entire volume of this cup, so that's going to be my guess. We'll see how close I am, uh, but we're going to mix up some epoxy and completely submerge all this wood. And I just realized that it's all going to float. So now we're going to have to figure something out. All right, I found some little scraps of wood here. And I think what I'm going to do is just use some hot glue and glue those across the top of the cup like that here and here. And then I'll just make sure there's nothing real loose on top um, that's going to float up. But I jammed everything down in there pretty good. Most of the insides here are going to get hollowed out anyway, so I don't really um, have any fear that we're going to hit any of this hot glue while we're turning. This is just going to really help hold everything in place so it doesn't float. So we'll do about 12 ounces of this, which is part A. And about four ounces of part B. Because it's a three to one ratio. And make sure you guys put the caps back on the right bottles. I have put the caps on the wrong bottles and then they glue shut. So make sure um, if you're going to be making anything out of epoxy, you put those caps back on the uh, right bottles. I'm going to be using this Caribbean Blue Epoxy Pigment from Black Diamond Pigments. Looks pretty cool, but you could really use whatever you wanted. Let's see, just stick a little bit of that in there. A little bit more. Yeah, it looks about right. Make sure you mix this stuff up really, really good. If you don't mix it up completely, it's never going to harden. And believe me, it's terrible. So mix this stuff up really, really good, and uh, you should be fine. Well, while I'm mixing, if you guys aren't already following me on Instagram, make sure you go over to Instagram, give me a follow, Seth's Custom Creations. I post a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff and stuff that doesn't get put up on my YouTube channel over on my Instagram, so I would definitely encourage you to go check me out over on Instagram. 
All right, we're all mixed up, and now we just pray that this is not going to overheat and do some crazy stuff. We'll just see what happens. Just going to wing it here. I could do it in a couple of different pours, um, but I really don't want to have a line between the different layers because it's going to be really noticeable on a piece like this. So, uh, again, we're just going to go for it. And we're also going to pray that I mixed up the right amount of epoxy. All right, got some more of this stuff mixed up, so we'll just go ahead and finish off this pour here, and then we'll just let it dry. One question that I get a lot is whether I use a blowtorch to pop the bubbles in the epoxy. Um, with a total boat thick set epoxy, I don't because it's so thin. It's almost like water, and the bubbles just come right out of it. Um, but with other epoxies like tabletop epoxy and two to one, I do use a blowtorch to pop the bubbles. I'm definitely not going to use a blowtorch on this because I don't want to add any heat to it because I think this is already going to get pretty warm as it is. And I really, really don't want to add any outside heat that could speed up this reaction um, any more than I think it's going to be sped up. All right, I'll see you in 72 hours. Please don't overheat, please don't overheat, please don't overheat, please don't overheat. All right, so I just came in here to check on it. It's been about two hours since I poured the epoxy. Definitely overheated quite a bit, but nothing um, that I didn't expect. Um, so now we know for next time, if we did a bigger piece like this, we would have to do it in multiple layers. Although it doesn't look all that bad. There's a couple air pockets on the sides here, um, but most of it looks pretty good. Hopefully a lot of that will get turned out, and there's just some bubbles on the top here, which will also get turned out. I'll come back here once it's fully cured, and uh, we'll take this cup off and see what it looks like. All right, here is our little epoxy pour that overheated. I cut down the edge, and so can just pull it right out. All right, this thing does not look too shabby. Um, the way that it overheated, it looked pretty bad. The epoxy expanded quite a bit as it got hot. Um, we only have a few little areas on the edge here uh, that hopefully will get turned out. Um, but otherwise, this thing looks really, really good. It's got a really cool texture to it. I'm not really sure how to describe it, um, but it's got a really cool texture to it. It's very smooth. It looks really cool. And um, the epoxy dried in a way that it looks pretty insane around some of those pieces of cherry burl. Let's get a waste block glued onto the bottom of this, and then we'll start turning it on the lathe. So as you can see, there is quite a few voids in this piece, a lot more than I thought there was going to be just by looking at the outside. We'll be able to fill those with epoxy and make this thing work, um, but it's going to be kind of a pain in the butt. And like I said, I expected this to happen. I knew that we were going to get voids because we were pouring it six inches thick. Um, so we're going to just start hollowing it out, see what's on the inside, and then we'll deal with the voids later.
Well guys, after about maybe 20 minutes of turning, this thing just blew apart. You can see all of the air pockets that are down inside of that epoxy. Those were all created when the epoxy overheated and uh, that just ruined the structural integrity of this stuff. And as you can see, the entire thing just blew apart. So I kind of expected this to happen. I'm not upset about it at all. Um, it was kind of fun to see what it could do. And uh, now you know not to pour this stuff six inches thick, which they do tell you on the bottle not to do it more than one and three quarters of an inch. But I was just, again, having some fun seeing what this stuff could do. And maybe we'd end up with a cool piece. But you guys can see this stuff is not made to be poured very thick at all. I had a lot of fun making this video. It was really fun pouring it into the cherry burl uh, in the cup, seeing what would happen. And um, I think if I went back, if I was going to make a really nice piece, um, I would have done it in layers, obviously. And then I would have waited until the layers were slightly soft to pour the next layer. And then hopefully we could kind of get them to um, blend together slightly so it would look like tie-dye or something. I think that'd be really cool. And I think that's something that I want to try in a future video. Guys, I have an awesome video planned for you guys next week. We're going to be building something really, really cool for my truck. And uh, I've been waiting to do this for a long time, seeing exactly what I want. But you guys are definitely want to, going to want to check out next week's video. Remember to follow me on Instagram, Seth's Custom Creations, where I post all kinds of projects. I post a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff and stuff that doesn't get put up on my YouTube channel. So definitely make sure to follow me on Instagram, Seth's Custom Creations. Also be sure to check out my website, sethscustomcreations.com. The link is in the description box down below. And lastly, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you go ahead and get subscribed so you can see when I do dumb stuff like this and you can see other cool projects that I'm working on. So again, make sure you get subscribed and hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever I post a new video. I'll see you guys next week.